And so had they decided like, uh, we definitely want to do welcome to the black parade. Yeah. That was, that was, you know, and the thing is we never really had any arguments with our label about singles uh-huh. because we kind of felt like it was a partnership in that way. And it's like, well, we should all probably just agree on one. Right. 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 And that was the one that was pretty obvious to all of us. Like, let's go with this one first because it's kind of the cornerstone of the whole album. And they didn't fight it or anything. They were like, no, we, we, yeah, we dig this. They totally agreed. Yeah. Yeah. It was so, like everybody's gut was to immediately go with that song. Like, yeah. Unanimously. It is. If you haven't listened to it already, um, and you're going to hear it a lot today, um, it is, for my money, one of the greatest songs ever made. Um, and I, that's now I base that on the fact of playability, what it means to me, everything, every song's a personal experience, of course. But, um, I, I think it's an amazing epic song, but we rarely get the opportunity to do something like this. So I figure like, if you can endure this, yeah, we'll go just piece by piece because you know you know what i'm saying you hear a song and you love a fucking song and then you sing it repeatedly and you you feel you know what it means but so rarely do you get to sit down with somebody and be like what'd that mean what'd that mean and they'll be fucking accurate like i remember when i went to film school in canada i was sitting there listening to a directing teacher nice enough guy but i'm mm. sitting there going why the fuck am i listening to what this guy says that jonathan demi was trying to say with silence of the lambs that mm-hmm. was the film of the moment I was like, if I heard it from Jonathan Demi, right. then I think I would, you know, believe it. But why am I listening to somebody's interpretation? Right. So uh, to go right to the fucking source, man. Right on. All right, here we go. All right. Man. So we're gonna we're gonna break the song down, and so you know, folks that are like rock, they're gonna they can't don't get too into it because it's gonna stop <laughs> and it's gonna be painfully irritating. <laughs> um. So listen, if you've never heard "Welcome to the Black Parade" before by My Chemical Romance, make sure you go listen to it from top to bottom. Then listen to this breakdown. All right, here we go. You wrote that first? That came last. Get out of here. Yeah. Like, uh, last. That's the that's the most important part of the fucking song. How does that come last? That is the, it's the deceptive, like, come on in. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a simple story. That turns into a fucking epic. It relatively came last. And, and here's what I mean by that. So there is a song. <clears throat> Uh, that we're working on in pre-production at the Paramore and we cannot get this song into shape. Right. And to me, my biggest problem with the song was it didn't mean anything. You know, it wasn't about anything. It was just kind of like, I don't know. It wasn't grabbing me, but it was obviously one of the catchier songs we were writing, you know, and all we had was like a verse and a chorus and maybe some kind of bridge or something, Mm -hmm. but that was all there was to it. And I hated the lyrics and I remember like, like Craig would keep bringing it up or people would still bring the song up because we'd be recording our album and there's, we still didn't have like that song that said what the album was, you know? And I was like, well, let me go into this. And I remember just kind of thinking, you know, once I came up with the, the kind of whole Black Parade kind of concept, mm-hmm. that's when stuff like, I was like, oh, like, let's have a marching band and let's have a. Let me, this is going to be the song. So basically kind of gutted the song and kind of started over. We just kept the feeling of what this song had been. And then it needed this kind of beginning. And I remember, um, which was, we needed something to lead us into the marching band happening. Right. So that was this, I remember being with Rob Cavallo and he, they had this amazing piano at El, El Dorado and I'd had this melody in my head and he played it out. And that was when we did. I think we recorded it right there. So I think the one we used is pretty much relatively a demo. From when you were just like, and what do you like do? You go like, it. it would sound like, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he, you know, and I would kind of be like, no, this note, and then this note, and then, then we go to this note, and then I'll sing this. And it built that way. And then that whole introduction built of the song. With the with the band, with the, the, the percussion, right. what sounds like marching band right, stuff. Right, right. It all came from that piano, which essentially the rehaul, the overhaul came last, you know. So if the piano and then the marching band Mm -hmm. came sort of last, then it would have just been, what would it kick in with musically? Just like when the the song came. It was like a drum beat into just the beginning of, you know, everything past the intro, I think, right? There was an intro. It just was different. There was an intro. And again, the oh, intro. Oh, I remember the yeah, other intro now. The intro didn't really mean anything, you know, not too much. Right. You know? And it was, it was some ring outs, right? Yeah, it was like. Uh, What's a ring out? 
like guitar ringing. It kind of like, like bang. Bang. Oh, like when you pluck it and bang. fucking hold your like, hand yeah, up in the air like a rock Some star. ring outs, yeah. Right. It was just some chords, yeah. And it just didn't, it wasn't about anything, you know. And I, I'd always been really hard on songs because I really needed them to mean something. Right. You know? And this was the hardest song to record. It was the hardest song to finish writing. It was, uh, this was the one. This was hard. This took weeks to like record properly. I mean, this is, but then that's proof positive. <clears throat> mm-hmm. The fucking great things right. come out of all that fucking effort. Really? Mm-hmm. So you would imagine with this being like a cornerstone song that mm-hmm. would have been like started here, everything else built through. Right, right. The record was called Black Parade before we even had a Black Parade song. Was there ever any, did anyone ever go like, hey man, is, do you have a song called the Black Parade? Right. Nobody really did. I don't I don't think we, we, nah, it didn't really happen at all. I guess because we were so into the concept that we felt like either A, it didn't need it, or if that song wasn't there, it didn't come. It just didn't come, you know? And for those folks that don't know, what is the concept of Welcome to the Black Parade, to the, to the Black Parade album? The concept is about this guy named The Patient, um, who's basically in the last moments of his life, and he's just kind of going on this journey throughout moments of his life and kind of on his way into death, you know? And what, where does this come from? You, you didn't go, I'm, well, I mean, aside from what I hear hearing about in last episode, you fucking having a gun to your head at one right. point. You didn't go through a, a, that was your near death experience, but that's not really related to this. This is about yeah. somebody at the end of their life. So what yeah. makes you think about doing this? The experiences <coughs> of being in, the experiences of being in my twenties and feeling lost and kind of aimless felt as close to death as I think I could have imagined. Right. And I spent a lot of years like that. And I think that's why I use the metaphor of death. Right. And it's a lot about, so this song really is about self-actualization, you know, becoming like, like kind of turning into your final form or whatever. Um, and it's, and the death metaphor on the whole album is from being in your twenties and feeling basically dead. You know, that's why I related so much to train spotting when that movie came out. Why? I felt that that was the message of the movie that, you know, it was like watching a bunch of ghosts on screen anyway. And right. it's like, yeah, like desolate and hopeless and right. you're never, you're never going to get out of wherever it is you are. Yeah. So it felt like being in your twenties was basically death, close to death. <laughs> it felt like. yeah. And so is there a, is there a Mark Renton then in this? Like, does the, our guy who's kind of metaphorically speaking in the concept album, he, he goes, he's, he dies. I see. Yeah. I see the patient as that kind of character, like our protagonist who's, you know, he, maybe he's not the best person. Maybe he's not the worst person. He's just, he's just you and me, you know? God, that's so fucking artsy. <laughs> um, you, t- do you tell him that? Like, how do you explain, like when you have it down in your head where you're like, Oh, I think I know what the album's going to be. Right. You show me sketches. You yeah. drew shit. Yeah, drew I drew a bunch a of, of stuff and it was all like pages of drawings of like us on a float, you know, with the city behind us and the, the blimps in the background and which was an image from the video. Mm. And I was just like, wow. And the uniforms and yeah. like I'd want to do this death rock version of Sergeant Peppers is really what, you know, I kind of wanted it to look like and feel like. There you go. So that was, that's the vibe. Like, Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> so even before you hear so perfect, like, songs you're seeing imagery or no while the songs are coming yeah we're working on songs together and as they're starting to form i'm starting to see this bigger picture come Uh, and then i get this kind of you know vision so to speak of both the black parade and what it means and what it is and i'm like oh we have to become this this is what we have to become in order to make this record we have to go to the darkest darkest place Oh my God. Yeah. That's, that's so fucking genius. Yeah. What now prior to this growing up, did, what, what is your idea of a concept album? Like what are the concept albums that are, what made you think like, Oh, I know I'll do something that's kind of all connected. The wall. And Ziggy, Ziggy, yeah. and Ziggy those well. were the two. I think those were the two sparks we were like, yeah. And night at the opera. Yeah. Like Queen, which is, I don't think it's a concept record per se, but it, I don't know. The themes are tied on that record. Um, how fucking awesome for you that you got to do yours. Like, not everyone's guaranteed yeah. to do a concept album and no. shit. And not many people would be like, uh, fuck it, let's try it third fucking record in. Right, third in, yeah. But I guess that would be the time to do it, right? Like, It's the time to kind of put up or shut up, I think, at that point for us. Because it was like a lot of, I guess we had been written off in some respects on the second record by maybe certain kinds of media for, you know, when, the thing is like, when you're a band that the youth culture listens to, like you, like rock critics will immediately kind of write you off, you know? 
And it's later when these kids that listen to you become rock critics that they, you know, talk about bands like maybe the way they should have been talked about, you know. Right, all right. Time. When your audience grows into it. When, right. when your audience has a voice. Right, when your audience finally has a voice. Because yeah. they don't when they're when they're 14. So we were riding off a lot of that, and then it was really like, put up or shut up for the third record. It was like, we have to make the most batshit thing we can. And this is still, you're with Warner Brothers at this point mm-hmm. still. Yeah. So um, you tell these cats, like, hey, I'm going to do a concept album. Do they go, like, right on? Because that right away, if I'm a guy in charge of the record label, I'm like, how the fuck do we spin singles off of a concept album? Yeah, it, it was, it was, I don't know that there was any fear from the label. It was definitely like, okay, that's what you want to do. And then, and then, but I think the proof was in the music that we made. When, you know, when Tom Wally sat down and listened to it, I think he didn't have any questions, I think. Right then there. Yeah, just, we were kind of yeah. like, this is either going to, you know, people are totally not going to get this whatsoever, or it's going to be received very well. Like, we didn't, we didn't think there was going to be an in-between, you know? Yeah. 